to be or not to be that is the question oh hey hi everybody hey <laughs> Julianne here with um, acting from all angles today we're gonna talk about good acting all right that's the mask which will be a metaphor for later but first let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me my name is Julianne Lichty Stratton and I'm the creator of actors in action professional acting training for actors where we are dedicated to helping the actor find their own fail-proof acting process and become a smashing success and give the world what they have to offer. So, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about what is good acting. And the reason for the mask is masks have been used a lot throughout the history of acting. The Greeks used masks when they were doing their big productions, which is really where acting was born in Greek theater and they would use these big masks with big projections on them where they could speak and everything and they weren't really using their faces they still of course use their bodies and could communicate and the history of theater goes all the way from the Greeks all the way down to the present day and there were times when people were very histrionic very over-the-top acting that was really the vogue for many many hundreds of years actually um, until Stanislavski came along and he was watching theater and said, you know what, I don't really believe what I'm seeing. Hey, thumbs up, we've got some, we've got Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. So, hey, Chelsea. So Stanislavski said, you know what, this to me doesn't look like these histrionics, all this like big acting on stage, doesn't seem to really reflect what I see in real life. So Stanislavski decided that he was going to work on a technique, a method of being able to get actors to behave like human beings when they were on stage, when they were in imaginary circumstances. And from Stanislavski and his work, which was really, truly groundbreaking and amazing, a bunch of other acting teachers budded from that and, and great actors and playwrights. Chekhov was a cohort of Stanislavski. But we had Meisner that came pretty much out of that technique. We had um, we had Stella Adler, Lee Strasberg, we had Harold Clerman, who was a, a great actor. We had tons of great actors, we had playwrights. It came out of the tradition of Stanislavski, which was taking the human and putting them back into the world of acting instead of this over-the-top thing. So um, it's interesting, you know, my teaching here in Utah, I've been teaching for almost three years now, and I think the biggest thing that I come up against here is people not really understanding what truly good acting is. That has been what I what has probably been my biggest optical, obstacle trying to teach people. And I think that people have an idea that acting is, I know that people have an idea that acting is something that is not because they come to my classes and maybe they have acted for a long, long time. Hey, Lenny, hey, Jack, you guys are on here to see you. They've acted for a long time, they come in, and sometimes those are my most difficult students. I have to really strip them down because they have these, these tricks and these techniques and these things that they think are really good acting. So they get up there and they're acting up a storm and it looks like they're acting up a storm. It doesn't really resemble true human behavior. And so I'll have to like say, okay, you know, that was, that was good. But let's try this. And sometimes they'll try the new things I'm teaching and they'll be like, that felt really weird or that felt horrible and I'll be like okay so that just means that your idea your feeling of what good acting is is off and then we start working on that so um so <clears throat> what is good acting to me my opinion of good acting is when I'm watching somebody and I don't know they're acting I just see a real human being up there when I'm watching somebody and it looks like they're acting that is not good acting now, you might see some actors where you're like, wow, they're really getting up the, the emotions and they're really doing that kind of stuff and they're like being overly dramatic and that kind of thing. And you might feel, you might feel like, wow, that's really good acting. But it's not. <laughs> what you want to do is when you're watching somebody having a big, huge emotional scene and you're just like, that poor person, that they have to go through that. And wow, they're making me feel something. When somebody is doing that, that is good acting. I think the huge problem is, is that good acting 
looks so easy. It's like they're not even acting. They're not even doing anything. They're not putting any effort into it. Exactly. And it actually takes a lot of training and a lot of technique and a lot of practice to be able to do that. So one of my challenges for this week is I want you to watch acting. I want you to watch when you're watching TV, when you go to the movies. Notice people that stand out as human beings going through something real. And if that's not your, your idea of good acting, maybe, maybe consider it. Maybe consider that that is actually where we're wanting to go with our art. Now, my argument for this is, besides the fact that it looks, it looks, it's more inviting to watch a real human being up there instead of somebody who's clearly acting, even if it's a little bit, <clears throat> the thing is, is when one is truly acting in this very human manner, it is going to affect the audience on a real level on, shall we say, a cellular level. The audience is going to feel it in their body. So, you know, sometimes you watch things or things that happen in life and you get goosebumps or the hair on the back of your neck stands up. That is your body responding to the truth of the moment of what is happening in your life or sometimes on the screen. And if an actor can learn to act so naturally, so convincingly and they are going to then have very strong impact on their audience now to further the argument art is there for the artist to express definitely but art is also there for the observer the beholder to be moved if you go to a great museum a great work of art and you walk around and you'll look at the paintings I used to do this and I I, I didn't get it. I would look at paintings and I'm like, I'm not, I don't know what I'm supposed to, what's supposed to happen when I look at a painting. And I had a lot of emotional blocks back in the time. So I think I was emotionally blocked. And then I learned that each painting should, if it's good art, make me, the beholder, feel something. Even if it's Jackson Pollock and it's chaos. Even if it's, um, um, Botticelli. Botticelli is my favorite painter. Um, the Venus on the Half Shell. They can be extremely representational. They can look just like real people and make you feel. Or, in, or it can be abstract and it can make you feel. But it makes you feel. So the thing with acting is because we're a medium where we're using our physical bodies, our emotions, our voices, we want to seem as real as normal people are. Um, and therefore, if we're doing that, and if we're truly having technique, we can move other people. So that's the tricky part with acting. So I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you, Utah. I'm challenging you, challenging you, everybody who's watching this. Really, really start considering what is good acting, and what do I need to do to get it, to be able to do that if you're an actor. And the, the truth is, it's actually very attainable if you are willing to work hard. There are techniques. There are ways to learn how as Meisner says, to behave honestly in imaginary circumstances. And there's, there's tons of ways to do that. If you look on my website, actorsinactionclass.com, you'll see a bunch of different exercises you can do. But it takes practice. It's funny, because like we sit down with a concert pianist, or we go, to, we go to the symphony, and we hear a concert pianist doing Brahms symphony, whatever. And we're like, wow, that was amazing. And it looks effortless-ish that they're up there doing that, but we know that they have spent years of their life practicing. But yet we go and we watch, um, we watch Tilda Swinton, we watch Tom Hardy, we watch fantastic actors and we're just like, oh, yeah, I could probably do that. I do that in my real life. I could probably get up there and do that, but it's just not true. Okay, so I am going to give you a link right now for one of my favorite things, favorite videos about about truly good acting. <clears throat> this is from my dear friend, Patsy Roddenberg. She hasn't actually met me yet, but she's my dear friend. Um, and um, Patsy Roddenberg, she talks about the second circle. The second circle is 
where we are when we are truly connecting with somebody, when we are truly in the moment with them. And this is what we seek in acting. So I want you to watch this. She talks about the first circle. First circle is when we're falling into ourselves. A lot of actors act in first circle. They're like, yeah, okay, I'm good. Yeah. And it, it may read on film as they're being real and they're, they're present, but it's not going to really make the audience feel. And actually, if you watch an actor playing in first circle, you're really going to be like, if you really try to feel and connect with them, you're, you're going to be taken out of the moment. You're not going to get the experience you're supposed to have by watching acting. You're not going to be moved. And then she also talks about the third circle, which is being really big and out there and, hey, hi, and like taking over everybody's space, which is also not real human behavior um, when, we're, when we're really connecting as human beings. So watch that and comment on it. Let me know. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I'd love to have more discussions on here. Okay? So... Like I said, I'm just scratching the surface with these subjects right now. I want to go deeper with all of these things, but I need to know your comments. I need to know what you want to hear. Um, so I'd love to hear about what you think good acting is, if you think that my definition of it makes sense, if you have any arguments against it, if you have examples of what you think is good acting that maybe I don't think is good acting. We, could, we can discuss that. My care is that is taking care of my actors and all, all actors out there. I want everybody to act beautifully. I love acting. I want, I want other people to be able to do their finest work. That's my goal with Actors in Action. All right. So let me know what you think about all that. Um, also, classes start again for Actors in Action. May 1st, the week of May 1st. Here's a link to my website um, to go sign up. Sign up. Uh, classes are going filling quickly. We're doing a lot of really cool stuff there. We've got the showcase coming up again in August. August, put that in your calendar, the 17th and 18th. It's going to be at the Eccles Black Box Theater. We're thrilled about that. That's the advanced class showcase. And we have some other really cool things coming up with, with AIA. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Back to the mask thing. Let's not wear a mask. Let's not fall into ourselves. Let's really be our, be our true selves, who we really are when we're acting, placed in an imaginary circumstance. Because that's really what the world is craving to see and what really is most interesting. All right. Have a great one. I'll catch you next week. And we'll turn out.